Okay, so a couple other points about this phase, which is that to expand our scope of interest for the moment, it is actually extremely handy to have ideas at this level operative for more than one game at once. It's a good thing to have. When somebody says, I've been working on this game for X number of years, and it's my dream game, and I put all my time into refining it, refining it, working on it, working on it, and I'm yeah. just working on this one game. This is the only thing I want. i got to get this game out. I get real nervous. Yeah. Yeah. That to me, that's that's a bad sign. A good sign is when they say, "Oh, I've got four or five, I guess," and then they think for a second, maybe six, and you got to stop them because the number is just going to climb as they think of all the little notes and things they have kicking around. And that's actually a much sounder creative state because play testing at this level, at this phase, for any one of them, is relaxation for all the others. It's mental. You know, ups and you've got a sine wave going, and um, you're actually processing things about the other games that you're not even aware of while you're working on this one, and it's great. It's it's actually pretty pleasant that way, and you're not under the gun for any of them either. Well, feeding off of that is I actually came up with the resolution system in part because of your critique of Kinfolk's resolution system. It made me think real hard about it, and then I realized a cool way of doing it for Origin. There you go. And I think that it is a really good uh, relationship. You know, then at that point, I think that one realizes that it's a lot like invention. No inventor is working on just the, it's not like a movie inventor who has their dream creation that they're just working on. Yeah. You know, somebody who is an inventor person has a lot of things going and some of them are stalled and some of them are would have gone well, but they aren't back to it yet, but they actually let it sit because it was going well. And they're like, good, I can get back to you when I want no. while I go and suffer over this thing or, you know, brainstorm of something new. And somebody who's not really under, who doesn't really understand this mindset will be puzzled. They'll say, why are you starting something new? You're not done with that one yet. Right. But that's not the right attitude. The right attitude is simply to have a lot of these things cooking at different stages and enjoy it. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, it sounds like I should have said, well, it's up to everybody. Some people like to focus. Some people like to spread it out. It's really up to you. Remember what I said before about uh, how whether you branch out in your experiences as a player whether you should branch out or whether you should, you know, focus. And I, I gave you the, the, the feel good answer, which is whatever you want, which in that case I think is true. If you don't like to branch out like that, then it's just annoying work. Right. If you do like to branch out like that and you don't, then you get frustrated. So it's mm -hmm. complete. So there's no good aside to, there's no good side to, uh, you know, altering your process at that level. But when we're talking about how many titles you're working on or concepts that you're working on at this prototypical level, I can mm -hmm. only say the more the better. And I do think that that's not, uh, I, I'm not going to give the individualized feel good answer to that. Right. Um, there is a very important point I can bring up later that inactive is not as inactive as it looks and that although you can abandon a publishing project you can be inactive on a design project and you haven't abandoned it so we'll talk more about that later whether it's okay to just set something aside and say you know what i'm just not going to work on that in the foreseeable future yeah and then your whole fan base, whom you've hyped up with your promo about it, is pissed when they say you've abandoned the project that they mm -hmm. invested in. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how to avoid that problem later. But here we're talking about a very different stage. You're talking about things that are really a mess of notes and not really ready for prime time. And that's good. Because then what you write down after that first playtest is anything that occurs to you.
and no matter what you write down is good. You can say, you know, well, I want the rule to be like this and not like that, which is what we tried. Or you can say, ooh, I want the rule to be just like that. I better write it down in a paragraph. What was it that I said anyway? Okay, I'll write that down. Right. And that's basically what you start doing is creating a document of what you did and what you think you're going to do instead in some cases. Um, and so it's a living document. It's one of the reasons why people who did the Champions Now playtesting with me had to get used to the fact that when they got a document, for me, it was just between edits. Hmm. And those edits were daily. Right. And those edits were often very significant. So if they come back and say, hey, you know, your cost for resistant defenses seem a little low. I'm like, yeah, that was Tuesday. <laughs> you know that's right. not that's not the feedback i want right and so um and and anybody who would have felt well hit a particular design phase with its little wargamer code you know uh version you know beta 1.25 kind of thing yeah and beta 1.25 is fixed and everybody who does beta Everybody who play tests it gets exactly the same document, very scientific. Right. And I'm not going to do anything until all this feedback comes back. And we're going to discuss beta 1.25 before anything happens. Forget it. It's not that that's not what this phase is. Mm -hmm. This phase, the document is alive and you're going to change it every single time you look at it. You're going to add to stuff. You're going to get you're going to look at it and say, oh, wow. With, with all that down, I'm freed up. I can actually write about something else about this game. I'll just, you know, I'll just go and write something else about this game. Or having gotten to this point, pat myself on the back and go and work on that other thing that I like. Right. Um, so this phase really is playful. It's quite intense because you make a lot of extremely significant decisions. But it is not intended to be a nosebleed, does the robot walk or not phase of, yeah. you know, of testing. Um, <clears throat> even calling it play testing is extremely misleading. Mm -hmm. You're just working on the game. And without playing it as you go, between edits, as it were, then there's no way to, there's no way to do it. You can't do it. Um, so with the right people, with the attitude I talked about, with the right attitude of your own relative to a variety of titles you're working on and an understanding of your process, which is to just keep writing down what you did and what you think you're going to do, um, realizing that you are in no way authoring a manuscript draft. Yeah. Is you're just not. I mean, perhaps perhaps wondrous phrases will survive all the way from the beginning to the published game. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. But they don't have to. And you don't even need to worry about that. You know, you can invent your deathless prose later. <laughs> um, so uh, this is also a really good time to do what we talked about before in terms of finding some image, maybe a logo design, Maybe a few pictures you rip off the net, maybe something you can sketch if you can draw, but whatever it is, you've got sort of your own visionary guiding image to keep you sustained. You know, I got a couple. Yeah. And so with those in hand, you know, put, I've said it before, you know, print it out, paste it on the front of the folder mm -hmm. and, you know, enjoy that that thing or if you do all your work electronically you know make it make it a screensaver for a while or yeah. a background image for a while um so this phase is not really a phase where you would want to run around telling everybody hey i'm designing this game which for most people is a publication plan announcement that's gotcha. Um, I'm not saying it's a secret. What I'm saying is that you can pull something out and say, hey, I'm working on this. 
it's just an idea. Yeah. Or this is turning me on at the moment. Right. Um, without elevating it to that status where people start behaving funny when they play. Um, and again, I, I tend not to try items at this level or phase of development with just anybody. I tend not to, you know, to, to just kind of, people are, people are very much in the mode, like at a convention or any gamer or gathering of any kind, people are very much, they will go into critic mode instantly where mm -hmm. they feel as though you have just empowered them to sit in judgment upon it because clearly you are bereft of judgment. Mm -hmm. Clearly you are in need of guidance and it's a good thing they came that you came to them. <laughs> um, and that's precisely the wrong attitude to encounter at this phase ever in my opinion, but especially at this phase, I would say that with the, right attitude and the right effort that I'm talking about, they blossom very fast. Sometimes. Um, it's, uh, it reminds me of when Matt Snyder first had his ideas for dust devils that he was posting at the forge in 2001. And mm -hmm was saying, well, I don't really know how to get across, you know, what the game's about. Um, and then he then explained the kind of thing that he wanted to convey in beautiful, clear, inspiring, and intense paragraph, about four sentences. It was great. And then he was saying, now, how can I get this across to people? <laughs> And my response, as well as any number of others, was, you just did. Right. Make them read that. <laughs> Do th I, you, you, got, you sold me, you know. <laughs> you got me. I don't know why you would want to write something else that isn't that, that's supposed to do that. So do you see he was getting himself wrapped up with how am I going to teach it? How am I going to sell it? How am I going to, you know, how am I going to write this when all he has to do is just say what he freaking thinks at this phase and he's fine. Yeah. Uh, I could go on a bit of a frenzied rant about why I think this phase currently is badly handled in today's indie design scene. Mm -hmm. um, and probably that applies to any aspect of today's design scene, no matter how old school or new school or whatever one thinks they are. Um, because we are currently in a an addiction to promotion and publication right now mm -hmm. that's really bad. Um, I am happy that one of the most enthusiastic Kickstarter supporter people that I know uh, has sort of come out of the closet recently in his ongoing video blog presentations He's come out of the closet to lay down an ultimatum about how all the games he gets are, are screwed up. Mm. That that the the average quality of the games that he gets these days is significantly lower than what he would expect for what he's paying for them and for the way they're promoted. Gotcha. And I think he's right. I mean, I have I have any number of you know of, of the games that I have bought in the last ten years. The ones from the last six or so are significantly poorer, if not in every single instance, in many, many more of the instances than they were before. Mm. People just aren't playing their games right. They're not playtesting them right. They're not developing them right. And they are too, too, too hyped on promoting and selling products based on timing, social timing. Mm. And it's it's not good. We're not getting good work. Um, so anyway, that's that would be the short version of the frenzied rant. Well, I definitely want to avoid that. I'm I'm willing to take my time with Origin, with Kinfolk, and a couple of other things that you've got, you know, baking or mm -hmm. scribbling on here and there. Yeah. 
um, what is your current situation in being able to just play for fun and kick around a few things at the table with some friends who are sympathetic to this kind of thing? I have a, a bi-monthly D and D game with people who love me a great deal. It, it's a it's hurting cats a little bit, but I definitely have the requisite number of people who like me and would be willing to do the thing. Cool. So, and if, and if it's bi-monthly, then that means you can probably find the time for it without really cutting into the game, the standard yeah. game. 